Welcome to this week's Midweek Message. It's Wednesday, August 11th, 2021. Typically, I'm reading three or four books at the same time. Sometimes it makes it difficult to get to the end of a book because there will be times that I won't pick up a particular book for a few days. It's also led to another habit, leading, leaving books half-read. I'll eventually get to them and finish them, but sometimes I'll put a book down for several months, even longer, before I pick it up again to finish it. As a matter of fact, I have two particular books sitting on my shelf at home that I've started. I've invested a lot of time into reading them, but I still have them on my shelf, half completed, waiting for me to pick them up again, which I hope to do soon. It's not that I'm not interested, but rather that something else needs my attention, or I'm reading something for a conversation that I'm going to have, or a sermon I'm writing, or something else that I come across seems more interesting at the moment, or sometimes I simply just need a break. But I always have the intention of finishing the books I start, even if it takes me a long time, even if I have an extended break. When one is reading nonfiction, the extended break is usually just fine. But when it's a novel, it often means skimming through what one has read before to refresh the memory. When one doesn't read to the end, one can get lost in the story and even miss out on important markers along the way before everything is resolved in the end. I guess I've been thinking a lot about this idea of reading to the end because I've been spending a lot of time this summer reading and praying the Psalms. Typically, I don't use this space to add to sermons and sermon series, but this week I've been struck by a theme that runs through the Psalms again and again. That if you really want to understand a Psalm, you need to read to the end or you'll likely miss out on something important. So many of the psalms are complaints, pleading prayers, angry outbursts, despairing reflections, or words of glowing praise. But as one reads the psalms, the tone of the prayer often changes partway through the text. The language of the psalms often pushes us to stretch our theological and prayer language. It opens up possibilities for prayer and even confrontation with God that many of us on our own would hesitate to engage in. But the psalms also set our prayers in a different context. They bring us from a place of anger, frustration, fear, or despair to hope and trust. But to get there, you need to read to the end. If you stop halfway, you'll think that the final destination of many psalms is despair, hopelessness, anger, and even dismay. This pattern in the psalms has often has also made me think more deeply about how we pray in the real world. One of the most beautiful things about reading a book or watching a movie or a television show is that most of the loose ends are tied up in a finite amount of time. The great mysteries are revealed. The crime is solved, the tension is released, or the promise is gone. This does happen in life too, sometimes, but almost never on the timeline that we would choose. Most of the time in the course of life, we find ourselves in the middle of things, and the story is not yet complete. For most of life, we're caught between the beginning and the end of something, and a lot of time, we don't know how the tension in life will be resolved. It recently occurred to me that this is why when we read and pray the Psalms, repetition and slow prayer are in order. It's helpful for us to hear and feel the tension in the Psalms and the psalmist prayers. It reminds us that these prayers were not written in a moment, even when the psalm is resolved in a few sentences. Instead, the Psalms often reflect longing, wrestling, and persisting in prayer over the long haul, trusting that the one who is committed to prayer will see and know God's faithfulness in the end. We are all living multiple stories all at once. The last chapter of our stories is not yet written, and we don't know exactly how it will end. Praying the Psalms slowly and intentionally can teach us to pray honestly and with expectation that God will be faithful to the end. This week's prayer comes to us from William Barclay. O God, give me strength and wisdom to live this day as I ought. Give me wisdom to know when to speak and when to keep silent. Wisdom to know when to act and when to refrain from action. Wisdom to know when to speak my mind and when to hold my peace. Through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. Everyone, I hope you have a great week, and I hope I will see you on Sunday. All right, bye-bye.